There's a big one. Oh gosh, I threw it on the pop max. I saw him wake it, come up and eat it. Two pops, gosh. Wow. There's two ways to work this pop max. There's cast it out there and walk it back like a, like a frog or a, a, a giant dog X or chug, 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 chug. Man, I just lost a good one there. He, he had it. Really cool thing about this Pop Max is it's got this water intake system. If you look at the mouth of this bait, it's anatomically correct where the mouth is kind of flared and it's got holes like a, an intake channel for water to go through its mouth, out its gills. And what that does is it keeps that popper hooked up on the water surface. So it stays stuck to the water surface no matter how fast you reel it back in and pop it and, and, and blurp it and walk it it stays hooked up. So that's really, really neat. The other thing is that line tie. Check out that line tie. It's at the very top of its mouth. Again, allowing that, that intake channel there to do its thing and stay hooked up on the water. Popper fishing is all about picking targets, making that delivery and popping it out of there. And again, when you have a soft bottom situation like we have here, there's a lot of sand, a lot of silt, a lot of muck. They're gonna hang out on the stalks of these little water willow clumps. So if you look at them, they look like little asparagus stalks, and they're, but they're real hard. So when you cast your popper alongside a water willow clump, you wanna target the shady side always. Um, if there's current like there is in this situation, you always want to fish the up current side of the weed patch or the lay down or the piece of cover, whatever it is, and also the immediate down current side. So they're, they're going to be on one of two. So there's all these patches of, of water willow here. I'm going to cast to both the left side, the up current side, and the right side, the down current side. And you'll know real quick, uh, once they start showing themselves and blowing up on that pop max, you'll... Oh, he ate that Pop Max. <laughs> That's a fun one. Demolished it. Again, when they when they bite it, especially that close to the boat, it's imperative with those top otters at Pop Max that you just rotate your hips, drive those hooks home, and keep that auto mat, auto mat bent. Whenever I'm throwing a Pop Max or any topwater at that, I want to throw it on a moderate action rod. This is a Mega Bass Destroyer Automat, and it's a seven foot one moderate action rod. Um, I've always paired up with either a floating monofilament, a 20 pound Seaguar ripping monofilament, uh, or if there's a lot of cover around, real gnarly hard brush or real jagged rocks, I'll go to a braided line. But always, 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 fish top water, especially the Pop Max, uh, on a moderate soft action rod, almost a, a real sensitive crankbait rod. And that Automat does just that. This Pop Max here has a lateral weight system to where the weight system moves left and right in its belly. And what that does is it allows that Pop Max to walk back and forth. So instead of just, you know, an old school popper that just chugs and bloops along, this one's unique. The Pop Max, you're able to just spit it and chug it as well as walk it all the way back to the boat. And I'm a big fan um, of feathered trebles on small topwater baits like this Pop Max. And, and I'll tell you why. When you pause a popper, what that feathered treble does is it flares out and it kind of moves. If you ever look at a, a fish in a tank, you'll see that they're always moving their rear fin just for balance. So that's exactly what that looks like. As far as color goes on the Pop Max, I really keep it simple. I'm either gonna go real dark with the color uh, or really, really light and white. So uh, obviously around a shad spawn, we just got off a shad spawn uh, generally here. So uh, you can't go wrong with a, a solid white type of color. When you see a lot of bluegill, obviously pick uh, more of your chartreuses and oranges. If you see a lot of bluegill in the area, the bluegill are spawning, but you just can't go wrong with Bahama milk pearl whenever you're throwing a popper, because that's what you're imitating. Um, is basically a, a dying shad on the surface. I've got this Pop Max, you know, just blooping along real nice. And, you know, typically, as a general rule with this Pop Max, the dirtier the water, the more aggressive you want that retrieve. Simply because um, the water's dirtier, you just want to displace a little bit more water, call those fish out of that cover just a little bit louder, uh, a little more aggressive. Um, and on the flip side, if I'm fishing Lake Mead or, or you know, Havasu out there in the desert or any of the Clearwater reservoirs, I'm gonna just give it a nice subtle 
walk retrieve um, where you don't have to make it, you know, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be so gaudy. Um, so just a nice slow pop and walk and that rattle, that internal rattle just kind of calls them out. So general rule, the clearer the water, the more subtle the retrieve with the pop max, dirtier the water, the more aggressive you want to pop it and bloop it and walk it.